Hello everyone! At the time of this video, it's been almost exactly a year since FreeQMS joined YouTube and started posting videos to help people understand and use our system. In that time, we've posted more than 40 videos and racked up over 50,000 views. We may not quite be world famous celebrity influencers, but we're happy to reach so many people with our simple videos on quality. We are currently performing and uploading our 2021 validations with a recent video on how to access the new validations. We thought this would be a great opportunity to review changes in the validations specifically from the 2020 to 2021 Shared Features validation. Shared Features is FreeQMS's most general validation. It is literally a validation of features that are shared between all FreeQMS modules. Another good description would be General FreeQMS System Validation. These are things like links, uploads, record creation, etc. Tracking the changes between the 2020 and 2021 shared features validations is a great way to generalize changes over the past year to FreeQMS. In this video, we're going to go through our internal redlined copy of the validation that shows changes made from last year while discussing the impact of these changes in the software. The first and most important change is that this is 2021. The validation was written with these date changes in mind, and to be repeatable with only a year change. This is why every time you make a note while performing the validation, you write 2021 to differentiate between records. Going to the second page, we have a couple small language changes. We wanted to remove the word implemented and skip straight to used when describing FreeQMS modules. This is somewhat philosophical, but we want to ensure users that they can use this system immediately. The first big functional change, especially when considering revalidation and applicability of validations, comes under Section 4, Validating User and Environment. This change comes based on feedback from a large institutional customer that manually controls IT rollouts of browsers, such as Chrome and Firefox. They commented that a year after we released these validations, many of their users were using an older version of Chrome. FreeQMS worked fine. We have left the somewhat ambiguous language that FreeQMS works with any modern operating system and browser. Validation is based on risk and after a year of operation we have not received a single report or complaint from lack of functionality based on the desktop operating system or browser. Another major functional change comes at the end of section 4. The 2020 validation scripts walked users through creating validation records in the live environment. At the time, FreeQMS was a much smaller system without record division functionality. The 2021 validation scripts walk users through creating the records in a validation division. This effectively creates a sandbox or demo environment that is identical to live to store the validation. Test procedure and acceptance criteria both include language clarifications suggested by clients. The next changes that really matter to the user and to companies considering revalidation of the user executable scripts come in Section 9, Requirements and Tests. In Section 9.1, users are advised of a requirement to create a validation division and to enter 2021 each time a note is made. Another important change comes in Section 9.7 and 9.8, when the validation advises that the system now includes the username and login email address on timestamps. This is an improvement for increased 21 CFR Part 11 compliance requested by customers. We'll now move into the actual protocol portion of the validation, which is what will be most relevant to users attempting their own validation of FreeQMS or reviewing ours for risk. The big addition to the test prerequisites portion of the protocol is the creation of a validation division. We'll quickly walk through this in FreeQMS itself. As planned at this point, in future validations we will create a new division for the validation records. On screen we'll click the divisions icon. Click create a division and then enter validation test, then the year of the release. For this on screen example we'll put validation test 2030 release and then create. The validation in step 5 of test 1 also requires the user to print the division screen and sign a date. It should come to no surprise that the team that works on FreeQMS has industry experience with other EQMS systems. We feel a shortcoming of the test setup on other systems is a lack of proof of test setup. Creating objective evidence for test setup isn't treated as proof of system functionality here, although it is, but rather as a guiding reminder to make sure users perform the test prerequisites prior to the proceeding. 
If tests aren't set up correctly, there can be a lot of headache later. Scrolling down to steps 6 through 9 of test 1, we have a corresponding set of changes. The validation operator is now instructed to configure the dummy or test users for access to the validation division. We'll show this on screen. We'll click the users icon from the home screen. Here we have several users and our FreeQMS account. We'll click the manager user we created for our internal validations by hitting edit in line. Here in the middle of the page we have the divisions option menu. This user is configured for access to the 2021 validation division. We'll also give them access to the dummy 2030 instance created for this video. This ensures that the user can see validation records created in that division. We'll click save to update the user. Scrolling through the validation, we will see a lot of minor language changes. Here in step 10.6, the protocol is changed to reflect the current button in FreeQMS, save versus update. Over the past year, we've endeavored toward uniformity. Step 12 is considerably revised. Frequent feedback from users was that they did not understand which part of the validation step represented a name versus content. It should now be easier for users to create these test files. The finished upload files are shown on the left. Next we will move past the prerequisites and into the first real protocol test, test 2. Test 2 gives us a small picture of how much FreeQMS has grown in the past year. Nearly all of step 2 where we created validation supplier 4 is redlined. The creation of supplier 4 corresponds to the finished supplier 4 we see on the left. The big items here at the top panel of the information page. It is now standardized as much as possible across all modules. Next is the scope, which was missing a year ago. FreeQMS users now have the ability to describe risk posed by the supplier and list products or services in addition to the one created on initial creation and track supplier regulations. Scrolling to step 11 of test 2 in the 2021 validation document and switching to the corresponding supplier on the left, we see the same updates for supplier 5, the addition of risk and regulations. A goal of the validations, both for us and for customers, is repeatability. Any changes we make over a given year should be repeated each time tests are repeated throughout the protocol. We don't want to test new functionality just once. Other than minor language changes, this concludes 2021 validation changes for test 2. Next we'll scroll to test 3, which has one significant change. Test 3 evaluates whether or not each FreeQMS tab contains a delete button, and of course, there's a new tab in 2021. Step 6 asks us to check the Supplier Activities tab, shown on the right as well, and of course, there's no general record delete button to be found. Next we'll look at test 4, which deals with system links between each module, which will also rope in any changes to the audits module over the last year. Step 2 of test 4 deals with creating a validation audit record to link the validation suppliers. Once again we can see multiple field updates to reflect system improvements over the past year. Down below we have Report Date, an oft-requested field that lets customers specify a separate report versus Close Date. The rest of Test 4 is unchanged from 2020, links still work as expected. If we keep scrolling through the 2021 validation we get to Test 5. Test 5 is a long, repetitive test that evaluates the ability to upload files to FreeQMS. The finished files are shown on the left. As discussed in the prerequisites, the biggest change here is how the test files are now named their complete dummy name with file extension rather than relying on the user to guess the extension. Also in step 7, the user is now advised to use tomorrow's date for expiration. The previous version that set a date of today could prompt the system to immediately report the file as expired. The purpose of this test is to let time pass before expiration. The end result despite new naming conventions, is the same with FreeQMS being a reliable file repository for the ability to set expirations making the management of supplier-related documentation easier. Next, we'll keep scrolling through our 2021 validation to test 6 that looks at task functionality. Test 6 has just one significant change, and we have to scroll to step 14 to get there. When FreeQMS was launched, there was no resolution field for tasks. Users had to update the original task text with any updates and depend on the record history to reflect changes. Midway through the last year, the resolution field was introduced, which is reflected in step 14. This affects behavior throughout the remainder of this validation test where users now have to click the row containing the resolution field. The functionality of the FreeQMS Task Center is not affected, 
but the performance of the validation is. Because users are now recording task resolutions within the task record, the validation no longer identifies tasks in the task center by the addition of new information. The remainder of test 6 is unchanged except for the obvious inclusion of constant references to 2021 instead of 2020. Next we'll look at test 7, which takes a more in-depth look at the FreeQMS approval system. Luckily, FreeQMS's approval system and the validation of it are almost entirely unchanged. There is just one recurring change as shown in step 5. The user interface to select and remove approvers is now improved and easier to use. The previous interface had users hold control and then click to pick multiple approvers. This worked fine on initial selection, but made modifying approval cycles a little more difficult. These changes are reflected in step 6 and all preceding instances where the selection of approvers is required. Note the removal of the tooltip that advised users to hold control to select multiple approvers, which is no longer required. There are no other significant changes to test 7 or the final test in the protocol, test 8, which also evaluates the approval cycle process by closing records. We hope this video is helpful to quality departments everywhere considering whether or not they need to revalidate FreeQMS in accordance with their procedures. Thank you for watching. We look forward to once again exploring changes and improvements to FreeQMS next year when 2022 validations are released.